Hi, welcome back to Stock Talk. This is Joe Rabel with Rabel Stock Research. So uh, I'd like to start the show off with a lesson. And today I'm going to talk about MACD. Now, I when I go into an indicator and learn about an indicator, I really go, go after it. And so I have studied everything from Gerald Appel, pretty much anything he's written. I'm going to talk about a couple of things that I think are lesser known about this indicator. So uh, let's go ahead and get into the agenda. So what I wanted to do is talk about when uh, MACD is overbought or oversold, as opposed to looking at it as a momentum indicator. I think it adds some value from uh, this standpoint. And the first thing we want to do is kind of find out what the key levels are uh, for each instrument. I'm going to use the S&P. Um, and then once we find that, we're going to be looking for reversals. Now, if that doesn't happen or if that fails, we have to learn from that and figure out what that means. And I'm going to show you how Gerald Appel handled that and subsequently how I basically use it the same way. Once we get through that, um, we're going to go through the stock requests that came through. Let's go ahead and get into this lesson now. So just for some of you who don't know, uh, Gerald Appel is the one who created the MACD indicator. And he wrote a number of books, actually, and not all of them had to do with MACD. Um, I inferred some information in all the readings that I did from him, and some of that's going to be discussed today. Okay, so as we start out, I'm going to focus in on the daily first, uh, because I wanted to show how we can take a specific instrument. I'm using the spider and um, figure out where we're reaching levels of, so here's the zero line, right? And we're looking for levels where we consistently reverse from an overbought condition outside of the zero line, okay? So I, you go back on an instrument and you're looking for areas, uh, both uh, actually, sorry, overbought and oversold like this, okay? And, um, it, it it takes a little extra work. You're going back and looking for areas, but it, it'll pay its dividends because you can see what's taking place here. Look at these reversal areas where we're reversing down in MACD, reversing up, and actually had divergence here off the low. Um, again, we reversed, reversed to the downside. Some pretty nice trading patterns. Now, it's an overbought, oversold oscillator as well as a momentum indicator with a zero line. All right. Now, it doesn't always go all the way down to the other side. Sometimes it'll just go from overbought down to the zero line and then turn back to the upside. So we have to kind of keep that in mind. I think ADX can act as a supplemental tool. Obviously, the trend of the of the price action along with the moving averages can help with this as well. But it can give us a pretty good sense of where maybe is not a good time to be a buyer if we're rotating down from an overbought area. If you're looking to be a buyer and this is starting to show signs that maybe it's rotating down, maybe not such a, a great spot. Um, now, uh, there's a couple other things that I would mention to you. Um, we, we can have the, the – there is the potential – for us to cross over to the upside, look like we're giving a sell signal, and then actually break out and go again. I'm going to show you this on the weekly chart. But first, I want to mention that typically that takes place on the upper end when you're in overbought territory, not typically when you're in oversold. When we're oversold, we can get really deep. But what we want to look for are divergent patterns. And you can see this this was also divergence, and then we had a quicker one take place here. We want to be on the lookout for divergence patterns that take place um, outside the zone. I'm not a huge fan of looking for divergences inside the zone, but when we get outside the zone oversold, I'm looking for divergent patterns. All right, so let's go ahead and take a quick look at the um, weekly chart. It's a different picture. You don't have as many signals, obviously. Some of them very good, though. We can see where we get overbought. We can see where we get oversold and we get reversals from there. However, there are times where you make these pushes and you, you go through and what looks like it's going to be a, a rollover, right? This is going to work its way back down to the zero line. And instead, it basically fails. It, it, the, the, the reversal down through the signal line turns back up and we break out again. And when that happens, and this is something that I kind of picked up from um, Gerald Appel, is we don't necessarily 
So it's almost like um, the indicator is broken and now we are focused totally on trend. We are going to need a trend indication of reversal to take place um, as opposed to looking for signs of reversal based on this. OK, so just to give you an idea. So if you look at this divergence here, that coincides with this this peak here and we pull back and then we go again and then we get another divergence and then we finally topped out. But what what we're actually looking for is confirmation of a break of the moving average. So I would use the I use the 18 MA for this in this instance. Once we break away and this is no longer uh, rotating back to the downside and working, in other words, it's not working anymore. We're showing such strength to the upside that we have to focus on the trend and no longer get caught up in all of these little wiggles and these reversals and all that. It's just going to cause you um, a lot more extra trading when we break away to the upside and we can't reverse to the downside and we turn back up like that, then focus on the trend and wait for the trend to be broken. And now we have a very strong indication that we're going to start working our way back down to the downside um, and come back in the zone and even towards the zero line, in this case, go to the oversold condition. Now on this area, again, we get way overdone to the downside, just like this. We rotate up, actually get a pretty good trading move. And then we get another divergence. And again, be on the lookout when you're below the, uh, the zone that you've created for any instrument. You can do this on any specific stock and any specific uh, index. Look for divergences off the low, but when you break away to the upside, use a trend indicator to know that things are starting to reverse. Now, if you look at what's taking place uh, right now, we're actually starting to rotate back to the downside um, and try and get back in the zone. Now, if for some reason we get a, a really quick reversal and this turns back up and we get this to turn back to the upside, then we're in the same kind of situation that we were here where you couldn't actually reverse this trend. We reverse it back to the upside. So uh, just kind of be on the lookout for that. Now, it is also possible that we could get some kind of an interim run. It doesn't actually break out and it turns back up, but then turns back down and it's really just a divergent signal. That can take Take place. I'm not saying it doesn't take place on the upper end, but I'm typically looking for that on the lower end. It just tends to the, the indicator tends to lend itself better uh, for those type of reversals at bottoms and at the top. You have to be very careful of these periods. This happens a lot in individual stocks where you get sell signal. You know, if you're using the signal line cross sell signal, sell signal, sell signal, and it just keeps going. All right, that's when you know. You got to focus on the trend and a true break of uh, the trend line or uh, uh, moving average you use. And then you have a, uh, a much, much better um, idea that the things are going to start reversing again. So use this to your advantage. Uh, obviously, on the daily chart, you can take advantage of those ups and downs. And this does show the difference between a daily and a weekly. Weekly tends to have much stronger trending characteristics in a daily Um and so you, you want to be aware of that as well. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and move into the uh, individual symbols now. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button and also subscribe. And also, my services can be found at rablestockresearch.com. If you're interested in just starting out to find more about the approach, uh, you can get my book right now at a discount. If you go to rablestockresearch.com forward slash book, you can get some more information on that. Let's go ahead and get into the stocks now. Before we get into the symbols, I do want to point out on the right here, uh, something that I do each morning, I open up this program and I go through the market summary on the ACP side. I love this uh, heat map, essentially, of what's taking place for the day. And there is some value in it for you, I think. Um, so we know that today, at least to start the day, and what I like to do is check it um, in the morning and then uh, maybe mid-morning, maybe at lunch, uh, you know, and then early afternoon and just get a feel for if there's any changes taking place. Because right now what this is showing is that value is winning. It's it, You, you want to look at it like small cap. This is basically small cap value. This is one end of the spectrum and this is large cap growth. That's the other end of the spectrum. 
right? And for the most part, this area has been winning all year, right? And this has been horrible. Uh, so we want to watch this uh, relationship on a regular basis. You can see it in the uh, performance of these indexes as well, but it, it really kind of jumps off the page when you can see today is just not a really good day. I can look down um, and look at the individual stocks and see that uh, Apple's having a bad day. Um, I think uh, I noticed Microsoft, IBM's down, but let's see, uh, Microsoft is down. Yeah, so those are down, and you've got, um, you know, areas more value-oriented up today. Let's go ahead and get going, though. I'm going to go through and uh, start with the uh, INDU. What I'd like to do is um, go through a decent amount of symbols here uh, today uh, and try and get through more stocks than I typically do. So uh, let's just look at the Dow Jones. Um, so what I talked, I talked about this a few weeks ago. The failure at 35, tried to break out at 35, didn't get DI going, right? And then the MACD slipped right back down. MACD's probably going for another test of the zero line, while this is probably coming back down towards a test of support somewhere in the 32.5 to 33 region, uh, I think is what I would be watching for. Um, we've got monthly, uh, the monthly 18 is 33. So that's really the first mark that I'm watching to see how this reacts. If it gets a good, decent reaction at 33, uh, then we probably get a decent rally. We could end up forming a range between 33 and 35. If we break 33, um, it's it's probably means we're in for more weakness for now. The funny thing is, is that even though this is under, even though this is dropping this leg from 35, do you see how the performance on a relative basis is actually starting to show, especially in the last few weeks, starting to show improvement. That's based on what I was talking about with the uh, S and P. You know, if if the big names in the S and P are dropping, it's going to hurt those indexes. Um, it's a little bit easier to outperform, even if your stocks aren't doing all that great, but um, it still doesn't help you in terms of actual dollars. So uh, let's go ahead and get into the SLV. Um, I would suggest using this trend line here. Uh, we're coming into pretty good support here right around 20 on the monthly chart, but I wouldn't want to jump the gun on this. We have a zero line reversal with low ADX. Draw your trend line in and wait for a breakout. Don't jump the gun. Don't get in early on this. For all I know, this is not going to hold, and we're just going to keep drifting back down. Gold stocks generally are not trading all that well. Um, it would be surprising to see silver break out without gold, and just uh, we're gonna, we're going to need to see some improvement in uh, some of the individual stocks. Um, I think to get these going, but um, right now, just use your trend line. Keep it simple. Okay, the uh, XOP is one of the better looking ETFs out there. Um, we, if we look at the monthly chart, we had a really nice move to the upside with confirming ADX, went through a correction phase, kept the 18 rising, right? And then, and now we're kind of moving back up. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if we have some kind of a little check back, maybe a pause or something like that. And we, we could potentially be doing that right now. If you notice, the way this pulled back, I mean, it could just spend a few more weeks consolidating while it allows the 18-week um, the, uh, to catch up a little bit. And the reason why I'm thinking that is because we've got flat moving averages on the daily. So what this could be is something like this. Now, the reason why you should be going and looking at stocks in the XOP uh, in the oil and exploration area is look at what we've got. Even though I'm saying, you know, maybe on this index, I might not want to buy uh, this second. We do have a reverse divergence setting up here. All right. We've got pretty good momentum condition because on the correction phase, you don't have any selling. You had pretty good selling on the way up. We've got good, good momentum here, good momentum here, monthly, weekly. And we have a pretty big base formed. Uh, some of the better looking patterns are in the energy area, all right? Um, KRE. So uh, this is the kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. This is one of the weakest uh, areas uh, to be on the lookout for. $40 seems like it's good support longer term, 
if we look at this, we've got a pretty strong support level at 40. We undercut that, rallied up, and now how this reacts at 40, I think, will tell us a lot about what to expect in some of these regional banks. Okay, so uh, Caterpillar. Caterpillar is going through a pretty nice little orderly correction here. Um, we've gotten to the zero line with low ADX. We're pulling back to a rising 18. We've got a lot of price support and we've got a lot of good momentum. This is a stock I would definitely keep on the watch list. I think this is a good stock uh, the way it's playing out, but we need a trigger on the daily chart. Um, I think this is a weekly setup with a daily trigger. Uh, if we if we get a pullback a little closer to the breakout level, a little closer to the 18, we can then uh, look to buy um, a trigger on the uh, daily. I mean, you can pretty much do it now. If we get a trigger on the daily, I think you can take it. Um, okay, checkpoint. So uh, I don't like this big red bar right there. Right. I mean, so if we had an orderly pullback, then I'd be thinking this could be something that I have a lot of interest in because I do like the way this is kind of handling this weekly pattern, just kind of working sideways. It's not a bad look to it, but we've, we're creating a little violence on the pullback. And I think that means you have more time. Now, I think this is going to hold 130. I just don't know that it's ready to, you know, turn and go. So expect some consolidation. We've broken the 18 day. So that means more time associated with this pattern. I think more, we have a sort of a sideways 18 month. We've got a little bit of a rising 18 week, but we, we had a breakout that failed. All right. So we, we I wouldn't be in a big hurry on that one. Now, this one, I love the look of this long term chart. Look at this monthly. Look at what's going on here. See how this uh, broke the downtrend line um, and then came back and tested here and then turned back to the upside. So our monthly chart turned into a one, two, three. It was something that I was actually highlighting in my reports down here in the uh you know, down in the uh, lower 30s. Uh, so, I, you know, I like the pattern. So now it becomes, what is our next entry here? Well, typically what I'd be looking for is a pullback to the 18 month. The last time that happened, it was very, very brief. It came down and just kind of took off. It was a tough entry. I don't know that there was really an entry there. Um, but what could take place this time is something a little bit more complex and allows this to come back to the 18 um month and and maybe form something a little bit more complex on this time frame even maybe a reverse divergence or something like that so i think that's what i'd be on the lookout for now because the 18 week line is still rising above a rising 40 all right you could consider this on a move back up on the uh, daily chart if you're looking at it that way right if we if we were saying here's the weekly and here's the daily the problem I've got with that are two things. You notice the ADX on the on the um, daily chart showing a little bit of strength. So I don't want to do anything too quick on this time frame. And then what I don't like is um, the fact that we had divergence developing. This is actually too far apart to consider that divergence. Almost want to consider this like a reverse divergence, but it is a sign that we're slowing a little bit. I don't know that I would call it specifically divergence. They're too, those two tops are too hot, uh, too far apart, but it is a sign of maybe a little bit of slowing momentum, especially when you follow that with a break of the 18 uh, week. Okay, let's look at um, Adobe. So Adobe is amazing how this played out. So we had this massive reversal and the stock could not find a bid for a very long time dropped down went from 700 to 300 under 300 all right and then turned and essentially really turned almost in the form of like a v bottom on the uh, on the monthly chart and whenever i see that when you get a v bottom off of a low that's not a bad thing and you can see how it really did change the trend on the weekly we broke the downtrend line we came back and tested a couple times and then coming up through this level here at uh, 400 was the shift in the trend back to the upside the problem i've got is similar to what i've been talking about in the s p is this break it did it with a declining 18 month. You almost always need to check back to that line. And this went kind of skyrocketing up into resistance. So this should take a little bit of time off. And you can see we're starting to get some selling taking place 
on the weekly. You see the big bar off the top. We're starting to drop. We're getting a little MACD to turn down. Uh, we're showing some sellers. See how this made a higher high, the red DI making a clearly higher high, and this is making a lower high. So we're going into a contraction phase. Contraction means consolidation. So we should be looking for more consolidation in this uh, uh, stock and not something that is an imminent buy. I think this is going to take a little bit of time. Um, SMCI. So the, all I have to see is one bar here. See this big, huge bar? I just don't want to have it. It's too close to it. I need to distance myself from this bar. It's too, um, it, it was so violent and 300 being a problem. And you notice what happened? We had this big red bar. You look at the midpoint of that bar. That midpoint of that is key. Look at what happened. We rallied up and failed right at it. And then we kind of made it another attempt, but it really hasn't. So another one where we should be expecting consolidation for now. This needs to work off this extreme overbought reading and this climatic look that it has on the monthly. We don't run a marathon and then, you know, take a week off and then run another marathon. This needs to take more time. This, is, this needs to consolidate. It needs to um, digest the gains. And usually it takes months and not weeks. Uh, a uh, so this ABBV, this is actually recovered really well. Um, it's it's taking some shape um, of an undercut and rally pattern in the way this is playing out. Um, first of all, let's look at the monthly chart. We we came down and tested this low. Clearly, it might not have been a higher low here, but it was more like a double bottom. And this is clearly a lower low. I would consider this a reverse divergence. And look, notice how green DI not only held above red, but it stayed above 25 throughout this whole area. So this is still a pretty strong trend when you look at it on a monthly chart. And then the weekly came down and undercut. It actually nicked these lows, came down clearly through that, but now it's punched back up and held the 18 week. So there's signs of improvement here. Remember, when we get this kind of volatility in a stock, big drop like that and big move up, the ADX is going to lag. So you have to take that into account. Don't be don't be looking at this as there's no way this can go up based on the ADX. It, it will lag and sometimes um, it'll follow through later. All right. Um, okay, let's look at Morgan Stanley. This is a this is just dead in the water quiet. Um, I don't know that it's bearish because look at how the MACD is working its way down and this is making higher lows. So, um, you know, I've got a higher bottom here and a lower bottom here and I've got a lot of support at 75. Um, and uh, so the question becomes, you know, how this handles uh, this uh, support zone here. I don't like the the short term action is not good, but I think this is something we ought to be on the lookout for, especially if it can make a move back up through 90. OK, Oracle had been one of the stronger of these big names, but it made this move up. And I kind of felt like so we had pull back here, pull back here, and then we make another move. Once you make this big of a move, you ought to start be looking as this more like a trading play. And then as it went up, and I think it actually went to a minor new high, this clearly didn't confirm. And now we're going through a uh, kind of a violent correction with a lot of support at 100. Give this some time. I don't think you have to be in a big hurry on this. I think it's going to need time to consolidate and digest this big move that it had to the upside. And the fact that it got really far away from the 18-month line. Let's look at one more here, um, NE. So we've got these utilities under a lot of pressure, all right? And um, for the most part, I look at utilities a little bit differently. I'm thinking, you know, support and resistance. I'm not necessarily looking at a big topping pattern, but the fact is, is that some of these look like huge, huge topping patterns. Like this has massive resistance now at 70. I would not want to own this. I'd be looking to be a seller in this on a rally just based on how um, violent this has become. Thanks for joining me. My services can be found at rabelstockresearch.com and my YouTube channel is called Invest Like a Pro. Uh, if you have any stock requests, send them to stocktalk at stockcharts.com. Have a great week and we'll see you next time.